Welcome to Game Changers Live from Miami, Florida. My name is Sergio Tijera. I'm your host. And each and every week, we bring you someone who has been a game changer in their field and who's touched the lives of thousands to get their perspective on their journey, their mindset, their struggles and successes so that we can inspire you on your journey. So let's get started right now. And welcome to Game Changers Live. My name is Sergio, and you can catch us each and every week on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google Podcasts, YouTube. Make sure to subscribe there or any other platform where you catch your podcasts. And very proud to say that Game Changers is now a top 2% podcast in the world. So make sure that you're checking this out and subscribing. So my guest today is a great friend that I met through the Cat Power podcast. His name is Randy Ramsey, and he's the founder and president of Jarrett Bay Boatworks and a principal at Blue Water Yacht Sales. He's been involved in almost every aspect of the boating and fishing industries, from running a successful charter fishing operation to co-founding the Harkers Island Sport Fishing School and serving as a marine surveyor and consultant. Randy earned his USCG captain's license at 18 years old and today is proud to be at the helm of the world's leading custom boat construction and service facility Jarrett Bay Boatworks. Welcome, my friend, to Game Changers. Thanks, Sergio. That was uh, quite an introduction. I appreciate you, all your kind words. But <clears throat> after those people I just saw on that uh, video starting off, I'm uh, very humbled to be here and be part of this day. Thank you for asking me. Oh, uh, well, fantastic. I, I love, love having guys like you on. So if you have not heard of Jarrett Bay Boatworks, definitely check them out because they built some of the most beautiful and customize and and just perfect sport fishing boats uh, out there. And if you've gone to Vineyard Vines stores and you see yeah. you know the back of a boat in the store, that is their boat. So Randy, tell me a little bit about your background and how you got into this. Sure, sure. You know, I um, uh, I always enjoy telling stories about the old days. That's that's a lot more fun than talking about. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah. I um. Uh, I was one of those kids that, that, you know, when everybody else is six or seven years old and they're saying, what do you want to do when you grow up? You know, what, what's your dream? You want to be a doctor, a lawyer? You want to be a musician? Well, I just wanted to be a charter boat captain. You know, I thought that the opportunity to go fishing every day and take, take different customers and go see the wonders of the world and potentially catch a few fish along the way and, and maybe even get paid was, uh, was pretty exciting. <laughs> so while people were preparing to, you know, maybe go to to uh, various schools across the country or hone their talents. I was I was fishing, trying to document those days, and actually got uh, my captain's license on my 18th birthday. At the time I got it, I was the only person that had ever achieved that, and uh, really? I'm, I'm sure somebody has by now. And I actually had a wow. charter booked for the following day to go run, so it was no pressure at all. You know. Oh my gosh, <laughs> so that's been quite a while ago. It, it, but those were the days when the incident in the Coast Guard sat across from me and watched you take the test. So it's a little different than the day um, taking it behind a computer screen. But, but then again, podcast didn't exist then. So yeah, <laughs> you already tell the story. Exactly. So I, uh, you know, I started charter fishing and, and things went really well for us. And we, we built a nice business. Unfortunately, Sergio, the boat we had, it just it just wasn't it wasn't competitive. We couldn't compete with the better boats in the fleet. We were, we were slow by comparison. Uh, the boat was fairly small. And, well, long story short is uh, I couldn't afford to hire anybody to build boats. So we decided to build one ourselves. So we set out to build one and, and uh, convinced ourselves we could do it. And, and wow, why did we learn how hard it was once we started doing it? In that day, that boat cost less than $100,000. So that was 35 years ago. Whereas many of the boats we build today are, uh, six to ten million dollars, depending on the wow. size and you know, what they do. So it's a very different animal. But but you know it was also very different in today's boats got a lot of systems and air conditioning and generators. And that boat had a single engine. And when you when you want air conditioning, you push the window back. Yeah, you it floats and has so an it engine. It goes. <laughs> day day, you know. Uh, but but you know, like everything in life, if somebody doesn't believe in you, if somebody doesn't believe that you can actually achieve your goals. Then, then it's, it's then, then sometimes you don't, right? I mean, I don't know how many good ideas are wasted along the way because 
Well, maybe because they didn't get in front of the right person. And and I was mm-hmm. fortunate enough that, that the guy I actually built the boat with, he and I had a couple of customers that have been very good customers. And they helped us with the financial resources to get started. And without those two guys, um, well, I, I wouldn't be talking to you today, most likely. Wow. And so w- when you got started, did, did you quickly realize, man, I'm, I think I'm in over my head? Or d- were you uh, up, up to the match? Like, no, no, <laughs> you know, I think we realized pretty quickly we were in over our head. Um, but, but, you know, that was, uh, like I said, we started in the fall of 1986. So we're coming up on our 35th anniversary here just in a month or so. Wow. Um, but, but, you know, Sergio, it, it's um, this community of fishermen, this community of of people who most got their start commercial fishing or charter fishing, particularly uh, back in the eighties and nineties, were really close knit group of people, and and all those boat builders when we would get to a, to a, a spot maybe that it wasn't working well, they'd show up or they would, you know, you pick the phone up and say, I don't think I know how to do this, and uh, <laughs> you know that somebody would show up and help you, and then we had a lot of people to influence that. There was a guy named. Ray Davis and little named Myron Harris and a, a really famous guy named Omi Tillett, who uh, they've all passed away now. But each one of those guys took time, effort, helped us. And if it hadn't been for them, we'd never launched the first boat. Yeah, it's interesting. Sometimes as as a as a young entrepreneur, you're all you're looking for is is a hand up, not not a handout, right. but you just need a hand up. You need a, a chance, right? Somebody to kind of give you a chance. And, mm-hmm. uh, and you had that in some of your, your customers, obviously, because you had some, some great experiences with them and you delivered for them. And so, you know, delivering quality in your mind was, was one of the most important things, right? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, every boat we've ever built, you know, if you, if you read much about us or you hear other videos, see other videos I've done, I'm always saying, if we don't adapt, if we don't improve every day, we fail, we fail ourselves, we fail our industry and, and consequently, um, we don't have much to be very proud of. So each and every day we challenge ourselves to do something a little better. But you know, Sergio, I don't want to miss a point you just made, which, which I know you're an entrepreneur as well. Mm-hmm. It seemed like uh, those hands up or maybe a hand back, you know, when, when you're struggling the hardest and maybe you're just not sure you're, you can quite get across that next roadblock. Almost every time someone reached their hand back and said, you know, we can do this, we can do this, and pulled us along. And, and several times, you know, you might imagine a, a, a company that, that I would call us a bootstrap company. We always needed more capital than we had. And as we grew, that became more and more difficult. And each time you wondered if you were going to make it, it seemed, it seemed like there was always an opportunity there. There's always somebody willing to help. And, uh, you know, I know God puts those people in, in our uh, paths. And I think it's up to us to recognize that, you know, recognize that it's okay to let somebody help you and it's okay to also in turn help somebody else. Yeah. Yeah. Asking for help is, is important. It's almost like it, it takes a community to, to raise a company, just, like, <laughs> really really just like a child. Uh, cause I, I'm sure there's, you know, there were days as, as many entrepreneurs experience that where you just start questioning, man, what am I doing all this for? Like, is this work, is this worth the, the headaches and the hassle and, you know, not having uh, a line of sight to consistent mm-hmm. cash flow coming in because, you know, with, with your boats, right? It's not like an assembly line. It's you get one big splash and then you got to kind of go out and find another deal. Right. So you're constantly hunting in a sense until you, you get, you develop such a reputation where you just have customers lining up. But, you know, in the early days, was that, you know, through your mind, right? That was that constantly going through your mind, like, you know, that concern and worry. Yeah. I mean, you know, before we diversified and started doing repair work, especially the first 10 years or so, you were always wondering where the next boat was going to come from and and who that was going to be you know advertising budget there wasn't an advertising budget it was it was all about yeah. mouth you know and um as we kept delivering boats and, and people saw what our you know what our capabilities were and the boats rode good and they're pretty efficient and people liked them then we were fortunate that somebody kept filling those gaps but you know i think back to the 11th boat we sold it's for a local guy a charter boat guy here and we actually had had an opportunity to move to a, a better building than we were in. And I said, Man, there's no need for us to move. We're out of business. If this guy doesn't sign this contract, we are done. <laughs> there's nothing else to do. 
and another charter guy convinced him that we would that we deliver what we said we'd deliver and uh he reluctantly signed the contract because he, i mean it's pretty obvious to him we weren't on top of the world at that point wow but, uh, you know they believed in us and then before that one was finished we'd sold three or four more so oh my gosh and so you were on the brink of shutting down oh yeah we've, we've been <laughs> on that brink several times yeah through our careers and, you know, because the boat industry um like many other industries uh, say the rv industry i'll use that as an example a lot of times we're the first to go and the last to come back because because mm. the recreational boat industry is really about um uh, you know income that is disposable you know and and it's it's not a housing need it's not keeping your lights on it's not keeping your kids in this college so it, it, we've had quite a few recessions over the years mm -hmm. each time it was a matter of could we continue to push through and and as the company's grown as we diversified in the repair business and into boat sales all those those factors played positive roles in in helping get through those tough times wow yeah. And it, you know, it, it's interesting because as, as you go through these, you're right. It's, it's not a need. It's, it is absolutely right. not a need to have a, a, a beautiful boat. That's a toy. You know, there's a lot of other priorities that, that take uh, the, the front seat. Uh, so it's tough to weather those and not, not just anybody can go out and buy one of these too. Right. So your, your market in a sense could seem limited, but you folks out there that, that find, you know, a lot of value in these. It is, it is a very limited market of people. You know, the, the really neat thing about, about what we do here specifically mm -hmm. is, is we make great relationships with people. Today, if someone starts a boat with us, it'll take nearly three years to deliver it. So through that process, you become family. Wow. You know, I think people might say, well, it's a long time to deliver it. But if you think about how we build our boats, it's really not. Um, it, you know, if you're gonna build a home and you, you want to put a door in it, then you order a door. And the door comes pre-hung in a jam and hinges yeah. are already on it. But when you want a door here, we build the door and we build the jam and we build the wall to put it on. And, you know, we're thinking about lightweight. And we're thinking about the quality and we're thinking about how it's going to hold up in the sea condition. And and even on occasion, we build our own hinges. So it gets down oh to my the goodness. type detail of building these boats. And um, consequently, it's a, it's a labor of love and it's a lot of hours. Yeah, and it is like building a house. You, you, there's so many details, and these all these boats are absolutely custom designed and custom made to, you know, and, and they go from from what length to what length? Is it like sixty so, to ninety? So we, or so? Yeah, it's uh, it's interesting through the career. We, we built boats as small as twenty feet, uh, as tenders to some of the big boats, and we built the largest ones ninety. Um, our most recent launch was sixty seven, and in fact, she's in South Florida right now, getting ready to leave for Puerto Rico. And we've got an 84 it was just previous to that this that's in the pacific right now so so we see our boats travel all around and 90 footers in gibraltar um, i'm sorry gibraltar right now so we're seeing them go to some pretty cool places and go fishing uh you know but that, that's very different than it was early on i mean the boats pretty much <laughs> local boats and we knew who we were selling to but you know those the customers that we do sell boats to like i said they become part of our family and uh, they're excited about it, and a lot of times they're very involved in the project, which we welcome. And then, of course, we love to see them come home. You know, when the boats come back here for some service, it's always good to see them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The boats become like family members, right? And they're they're pieces of art that you kind of bring back and restore back to its you know yeah. original greatness, right? When they, yeah, <laughs> when they, yeah, they you know, we, we, I've told people for a long time that the boat's always ours. We just let you rent it for a while, you know. And, um, but the customers. Yeah. They, they, they really love the boats too. Oh, that's fantastic. So you've uh, developed a, quite a team of uh, artists, you know, I, I would say, right? You know, not only engineers, but but true artists in, in how you guys uh, build these boats. And they seem to have stuck with you for a long time. Why? What is it about your approach, your culture, you know, the way you run the operation that makes people stick around? Well, yeah. You know, I think there's a lot of secret sauces to that, you know, depending on, on what, what you're trying to sell, where it's maybe those hamburgers with the special sauce or, or trying to sell <laughs> custom boats. But but I think there's several things. I think it's allowing people to have pride in what they do every day. 
and, and challenging people to become mm -hmm. better at their at their trades and at their art. You know, I think it's also about treating people like family. You know, knowing when their kids are going to a ball game or or uh, when maybe they're having a struggle at home with, with someone that's, that's not well. And many of our employees have been with us. Well, we've got one that's been for 34 years. So, so he's kind of hung on for a long time. Wow. But once, once someone has been with us for a year or so, they very seldom leave. You know, we try to look after our people just like family. I mean, you hear it, maybe it gets, uh, it's an overused word or term. Mm -hmm. but I think we, I don't think we really do. We feel like people here are our family and we try to treat them just like that. But you know, Sergio, it's, it's, uh, you know, you're an entrepreneur. I see what you're doing. You're interviewing entrepreneurs on your podcast and seeing how they've affected the lives of people. And I think some of it too is, is giving people what your expectations are and not micromanaging them to get through the task. Yeah. You know, yeah. Let, let people show you what they're capable of. And, and that just continues to build more and more pride in who they are and, and what they can accomplish. When people feel valued at what they do and they have control over what they do, like you said, they're not being micromanaged and they feel that sense of trust and, you know, put on them uh, to make the right decisions. I think that's when they really shine, right? Their, their talents uh, and skills really come out and, uh, and they can express themselves in their work mm -hmm. and not be afraid of, you know, repercussions, right? If they, if they do something wrong, it's a learning opportunity and, and they just kind of get better and better and then pass that on to the next guys that come in right. and girls, right? Yeah, you don't, you don't, uh, you can't advertise uh, on monster.com or whatever those other websites are for uh, skilled um, custom boat builders. That's a very narrow group of people in the, in the world. Yeah. You know, early <laughs> on, early on, we'd have people apply and they say, we're a carpenter. So we're not looking for carpenters, we're looking for furniture makers because it's that level of quality that we're looking for throughout the entire build from, from the very beginning to the very end. Mm. And how important has, has uh, community involvement been with you guys in, in terms of, you know, as a company and what your values are and, and how, you know, your pledge to, to support the industry and so forth. Tell me a little bit about some of the stuff that you're involved in. Yeah, that's it. That's a very good question. So when we talk about community involvement, we talk about several different communities. You know, the, the state of North Carolina and our local county and town here have been very supportive of our efforts over the years. And in fact, uh, when we made our last move about 22 years ago to our current location, they were very involved in helping with zoning and problems we were having trying to get rid of um, sewer and water to the site. And 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 they, they saw value in helping a homegrown company continue. You know, there's another whole family of people that are our industry and our industry is really small. I mean, if you think about the, the, well, the custom sports fishing business, which to your point earlier, I'd say our boats now average about 65 feet in length. Well, that's a tiny, tiny group of people. And we all know each other. And, and we typically call on each other and, and share best practices. And, and we try to find ways to improve everybody as we, as we pull along. But, you know, it's also our community, uh, like you're talking about here, the people here, you know, and in this industrial park and whether it's uh, our vendor partners or whether it's suppliers, they all play a really critical role. So I, I also think it's really important for us to give back to the community, give back in ways through um, supporting events that are happening here, supporting things like the Big Rock Blue Marlin Tournament, which is the world's largest blue marlin tournament held right here in our community. But I also do an awful lot with higher education, even though I didn't go to um, college myself. I went to a community college for a year. I am uh, um, chairman of the UNC Board of Governors, which has 16 public universities. Wow. About a dozen hospitals, uh, the second highest ranked high school in the country, and about 240,000 students. Wow. That's impressive. And so, you know, to that point, then you made it. How important is education right um i think obviously it, it, it is but do you consider or would you attribute your success more to your grit your persistence your innovation you know than to kind of book smarts right i'm not not encouraging people to not go to school i think it's it's fantastic but i think there's an element where many 
very, very successful people have made it because of other factors outside of mm -hmm. um, that they learn outside of school, right? So how, how big of an imp uh, impact did those factors have on your success? So I think that, that it comes back to what are you trying to achieve? You know, if I wanted to be a mechanical engineer and, and I thought that's where my passion was, but then, I, then I have to go to engineering school in order to, to do that. You know, right. I, I mean, I could argue that we do a lot of mechanical engineering right here and I don't, we don't, I don't have a degree, but a lot of that's trial and error of what we've done over yeah. you know, and others have done over, over decades. Um, I think Sergio is a lot about being passionate. You know, it's a lot about caring enough about mm -hmm. uh, what you do every day and putting your heart and soul into it and making sure that you are giving it everything. You know, um, one of the problems that, 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 we all have is is seeing people who may have been on the verge of being very successful fail because they just didn't keep pushing a little bit harder. And I mm. think that, you know, as I look back on a lot of opportunities, we could have quit pushing, we would likely have failed. Um, I, I think that, that loving what you do every day and coming to work every day like you love it is going to propel your success. You know, the, the role I just told you I serve with our university system, I think is critically important uh, to people having opportunities. Uh, and I think we help those people have those opportunities through education. But I think I'm a, I'm a well, I'm an example of someone who's done okay with uh, without a higher education. <laughs> That's right. And, you know, the interesting thing is that in life, we never know how close we are to a breakthrough. And sometimes you just quit right before right. That, that inflection point right. where, like you said, you you know, you got that contract kind of begrudgingly, uh, you know, was given to you, but you were on that, that point where you could have just, you know, folded your cards, right? Could have been the end. And, and so that, that being persistent, continually showing up every day, taking the actions that you need to do to move yourself forward, even though you may feel like, you know, there's a lot of gloom and doom on the horizon or, mm -hmm. You know, you just lost a big deal and you you're, you feel down. You never know how close you are to that to that next big win. And so, eventually, if you keep pushing, you know, people will listen, right? <laughs> well, you know, I think people, you know, they instinctively see that in you. They see that you are someone who wants to be successful and they want mm -hmm. to be part of that success. Um, you know, I find myself doing it now. I think about a gentleman named Jack Huddle who was instrumental in the growth of our company and instrumental in uh, well, treated me like a, a son, truthfully. And his two sons are not, one's building a boat with us and another one has one. And I think the family now has built a total of five over our history. Wow. Well, they did things, he saw something in, in, in me that he wanted to help. And and I don't know how we make it without him. So so now it's incumbent on us, right? Do the same yeah. thing. What is trying to help somebody find their, their path through engineering school, as I mentioned, or medical schools. But we're just trying to find a path as a, a leader in our communities and, and being involved, whether it's um, doing the smallest act or sometimes a much larger one. Yeah, seeing the potential in people is is incredibly powerful, not only for you to be able to see that, but as you demonstrate and kind of impute a value on onto them that maybe they don't see in themselves it is tremendously powerful because you never know how uh, how big of an impact your words can have on someone's attitude and their belief in themselves. If if you in a position of of success and power tell them, hey, listen, I think you have a lot of potential. I see this in you, and and you should really go after this. That could really ignite the fire, and you know that one you know butterfly's wings flap ends up being a hurricane, you know, <laughs> on the other side of the world. So right. our, our words have a big impact. Words do have big, big impact and, and just being patient with people and taking a little bit of time can, can change somebody's whole path. Yeah, and, yeah. Uh, you know, when, when you think about how powerful we are as humans to simply show a little bit of kindness to our fellow human and what kind of impact that can have on, you, you know, kind of, it makes you feel good about, about what you do, no matter what that is. Fantastic. So Randy, as we start to wrap up here, you know, what's, what's the, what does the future hold for Jared Bay Boatworks? Where, where do you see the company going five, 10 years from now? What, what are some things coming up that we can get excited about and, and kind of share with everyone? We've got, well, we've got some pretty cool boats that, that are 
uh, contractor. We're getting ready to start an 85 footer, which is going to be a lot of fun. You know, we've experimented and done a lot with, with uh, different types of composites and materials for our boats. We've done a lot of engineering recently. Um, you know, right now we're, we're having a great time with a 70 foot boat we built called Iron Leader. And you mentioned early in the podcast, some, some Caterpillar engines that happen to be in that. I hope people will yeah. hear another podcast with, with Cat Power to, to hear about, about what we're doing there. Yeah. But, but I think it's, it's uh, you know, it's ever evolving, the company, you know, as we've, uh, we went from a company that built various plain charter boats to now some of the finest boats in the world. But we also have grown our repair business. So now we're, we're hauling boats that are up to 150 feet in length and up to 600,000 pounds. So as, as we dip our toes in that, we change our offerings a little bit. We try to make sure that we are uh, changing and moving with the times. I'm looking forward to being here 35 more years. Maybe That's I'm right. Here, <laughs> we're looking forward to that 70 year anniversary, buddy. We're, yeah, we're holding you to that. You know, I'm looking forward to it. I hope I'm here to have an interview with you for that one. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic. Well, guys, check it out. Uh, Jarrett Bay Boat Works. And it, also, if you're in the Vineyard Vines uh, stores, you'll see some of these beautiful uh, counters and, and kind of half half a boat in, in that mm-hmm. in that shop. You'll you'll be right. You'll be remembering Jarrett Bay and, and Randy's uh, team there. You guys are doing some amazing work. They're actually going to be at the boat show in Fort Lauderdale here coming up in October as well. So you can check them out there. Thank you so much, my friend, for being on Game Changers. Appreciate it. If you loved what you heard in today's episode of Game Changers, please subscribe and rate us. The lessons and the stories in these podcasts are immensely valuable, so I invite you to share them with a friend who needs to hear it. You may end up being the game changer in their lives. If you loved what you heard in today's episode of Game Changers, please subscribe and rate us. The lessons and the stories in these podcasts are immensely valuable, so I invite you to share them with a friend who needs to hear it you may end up being the game changer in their lives.